so today we'll be looking at uh, polynomial regression um, it is similar to uh, linear regression as in they both have the term regression in them but linear regression was a very simple relationship between uh, the two variables in a data set uh, x and y but if you want a more complicated relationship uh, in fact if you want a better defined relationship between uh, the two variables we go for polynomial regression so let's again look at a data set to understand this better let's let me check the if it is recording yes let me search for some data set so uh, polynomial regression data set right uh, let's find one let's go to this one Let's see where uh, I can download this, probably at the end somewhere. Yeah, so they have a data set. It's a, a salary versus position data set. Uh, so I can, let's use theirs. Position salary dot CSV. Let's download it. Right, I have it here now. This one, right? Let me open up Octave at the same place. I can also open up at a different place. So let me in fact, uh, just to show you that this can also be done, let me uh, go to my home directory and open up the terminal there and let me go to my, uh, let me go to um, the place where I have all my tutorial scripts. All right. So let, let's open up Octave here. Let me op open up a file in this directory. Let's call this polyreg.m. Right. So we always start with this. Okay. So now let's import the data set in Octave. I hope you remember how we do that. So let me call a variable, name a variable data and use the function CSV read. All right. CSV read. And we know that the where is where have I uh, downloaded it? It's in the downloads folder, right? So I need to give the path to that folder. So the way I do that is uh, in Linux. This means the home directory. In the home directory, I, I go to the downloads folder, and in that I write the name of the file, which is position underscore salaries. Position under underscore salaries. So you can do that. Dot CSV. You can uh, give the path as such, so it doesn't matter where your Octave script is, as long as you specify the path of your uh, data file, it will work. And let's look at the data first, right? Let's look at if we have to skip any lines. So as I told you, CSV read only reads uh, numeric data, numerical data. So this has a column of some string which gives the position names, and it has another uh, row uh, which is also a string or text it is a position level salary it's the heading of the uh, columns so i want to ignore these two so the way i do that is i pass uh, that uh, argument saying one and one so it means f uh, ignore the first row and ignore the first column and that will read the data set for me so let me open up octave and okay octave and uh, run this poly reg Let's look at the data. So this is the data that we have. So it's imported correctly. Let's go back to the file again. And yeah, before that, uh, let me plot it. Oh, all right. I didn't put it in uh, X and Y yet. Both are in data itself. So let me take it out of this data variable and let me put it in X and Y. So X is all the data that's there in the first column and y is all the data that's there in the second column and now let me run it again right so now the scatter plot should work right as you can see these are the points right i hope it's visible on your screen or let me uh, plot it using a better marker so x comma y comma let's plot it using um asterisks right red asterisks Okay, so yeah, so this is how the plot looks like. Now, if you were to fit, fit uh, uh, if we were to use a linear regression technique here, 
Uh, do you remember how we can do that uh, automatically using uh, MATLAB? So or Octave, what we did last time in the previous video, video was that we wrote a whole script for linear regression but as I told you in the end, uh, Octave already has a function which does that for you. It's called polyfit. So I pass in uh, values of x, y, n. I tell it the order of the polynomial I want to fit. So uh, order of 1 means a straight line and this returns the coefficients. So if the line equation is y equal to mx plus b, this polyfit returns the coefficients m and b. So the first coefficient corresponds to um, the slope and the second coefficient corresponds to the intercept. So now I can plot this uh, line, straight line which I have, which is defined by m and c here, m and c. So the way I do that is I input x values and then I evaluate this polynomial P using a function called polyval. It evaluates your given polynomial. It so the uh, data you need to pass to it is the coefficients of your polynomial, that's P, and the values where you want to evaluate the polynomial, right? So if you do that, you can see that there's a, this straight line has been fit into your data. But again, looking at it, it does seem like that it is not a good fit, right? Because it's not really predicting the values that well as it was doing in the earlier problem. For example, for position 10, if I want to know, um, if I want to know what's the uh, salary for position 10, I get the 613454, right? But the actual value that we know, the actual value for salary 10 is right this much. Uh, there are a lot of mo lot more zeros than. Okay, the value is much more than what it is here, right? It's so right. One, two, so anyway, so the the thing is that uh, this is not predicting the values correctly. So what do we do? So now instead of fitting a straight line, what we can do is we can fit a polynomial that will give us better fit to the data. The way, to, the way to do that is, uh, so let me just quickly tell you how one of the ways that we can do it. So for example, if you want to fit a polynomial P, A0 plus A1X plus A2X square plus A3X cube, right, a third order poly polynomial. Uh, and you have a data set, right, you have a data set X1, Y1, X2, Y2, X3, Y3, right. If you have this data set and you want to fit this polynomial, one way you can do that is you can you know substitute the values you know these values right you have these with you so you can write a0 plus a1 x1 plus a2 x1 plus a3 x1 plus sorry it's only little it's only little uh, a3 this is square and this is cube and that's equal to y1 right then you have again a0 plus a1 x2 plus a2 x2 square plus a3 x3 uh, a a3 x2 cube equals y2 and similarly if you substitute the value of x3 you get a1 x3 plus a2 x3 square plus a3 x3 cube equals y3 so i can write this as in matrix form i can write this as 1 x1 x1 square and x1 cube 1 x2 x2 square x2 cube and 1 x3 x3 square x3 cube <coughs> excuse me i can write this one as this particular one as a0 a1 a2 a3 all right and then this as y1 y2 y3 so I can write this particular equation, this set of equations as in the matrix form as such. If you look at the size, the, this size is, the size of this matrix is uh, three rows and four columns. This is what one row and, uh, sorry, four rows and uh, one column. So you, what you get is three rows and one column. So this is a valid uh, matrix equation. So why am I showing you all this? So now that you have this with you, let's name this A, let's call this A, uh, okay, let's name this something else then, let's call it V, let's call it A and this is Y. So I can write this as a matrix equation, matrix equation V A equals Y, 
So here our knowns are v and y. The unknown is the coefficients of the polynomial a. So I can write this as a v inverse y. So if I'm able to find the inverse of the matrix v, I can get the coefficients, right? Uh, but uh, there's a problem. We don't really know how to find inverse of matrix matrices which are not square. This is not a square matrix, right? Three by four is not a square matrix. We haven't learned. I think I haven't learned in school how to find out inverse of a uh, non-square matrix. But uh, we have MATLAB and Octave with us, which will do this job for us. It is so. How it does that, I don't really know. I mean, I don't really have enough uh, knowledge to tell you about this in this video. Uh, there's there are some algorithms which do this. So what MATLAB does is, if you give it a non-square matrix, it uses a function called pseudo inverse p in p i n v and it finds the inverse for you. So we leave this to MATLAB or Octave. That, that they, uh, I mean, the software does this calculation for me and then I simply multiply it with y to get the value of the coefficient. So let's do this quickly. Our file again. So now we need to generate this matrix, right? We need to generate this matrix, which is uh, the V matrix. Um, the way we do that is, what we need is, uh, see if you look carefully, these are rows, which are which each row in each row you take a value of x out of the data set and then you raise it to zero, one, two, and three. Fine. So let me, um, yeah. So uh, let me show you how this can be done. So we have x, right? Uh, okay. Let me run this. I didn't run it, I guess. Yeah, so we have x. I want each element of this x to be raised to 0, 1, 2, 3, right? And that will be stored in the rows. So the way I do that, do that is I type this command. Dot means raise each element to some power. So if I do this, each element gets uh, squared. But I don't need uh, just the square. I need each element raised to 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the way I do that is I write raised to 0 to 3 and then I get this particular matrix. So the first row is raised to 0, 1, 2, and 3. 1 raised to 0, 1, 2, 3 is 1. Second row is raised to 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's see what second one was. The second was 2, right? So 2 raised to 0 is 1. 2 raised to 1 is 1. Uh, 2. 2 raised to 2 is 4. And 2 raised to 3 is 8. So this is how you uh, generate the V matrix. So let me write it quickly. V is, um, is it recording? Yeah. So V is x raised to um, okay so let's say i want a, a polynomial of degree k i'll define k to be what whatever i want for now it's three so this goes from zero to k all right so that's done so what do we know what do we need now we need to do, do this we need to solve mm -hmm. this equation a equals v inverse y so i told you matlab does the inverse calculation for us the function it uses is p in which means pseudo inverse so this times y should give us the coefficients which are stored in A. Let me check if it works. Yes, I've got these coefficients. Let's, uh, you know, plot this. Um, so how do I get the values? Um, so there's a function called polyval, right, in Octave or MATLAB. What, is, what it does is polyval if you pass in the coefficients for example if you have a if you have a polynomial like this a not even ax but what matlab does is it defines it in another way so the way it defines is the way matlab defines a polynomial is c um, c1 or c0 x let's call it c1 itself c1 x raised to n or x raised to k if k is your uh, degree of polynomial plus c2 x raised to k minus 1 plus c3 x raised to k minus 2 plus c4 x raised to k minus 3 and so on right so this polyval what it does is if you input the coefficient c1 c2 c3 and c4 to this function it evaluates the polynomial 
by constructing this function for you only thing you need in order to for example if you want to calculate p of x the only thing you need to pass polyval is the value of x and the value of these coefficients then it will calculate the value of p of x by constructing this function for you so the way i'm telling the reason i'm telling you all that is once i have these uh, coefficients generated I can I need to evaluate them in order to plot right if I want to plot my uh, polynomial the first thing I need to do is generate some data points which I'll do by you know x I'll generate them between the first data point and the last one and I'll generate let's say 100 data points but I, ne I need to evaluate these data points at the polynomial which I have constructed and the polynomial I have made is only defined by the coefficients so first I have to you know construct a polynomial and then calculate these values but instead of doing all that I can ask MATLAB to do it for me it will do that using uh, the function called polyval so let me write xq and polyval before that let me plot the uh, uh, points itself x comma y with some red uh, asterisks as we did before and then hold on and then let's evaluate our polynomial yeah so the way the reason i told you this uh, i showed you this is that the matlab function or the octave function does have a polyval uh, inbuilt function but in that the polynomial is constructed such that the coefficients are defined uh, for the greatest degree first and the smallest degree last but the way we have calculated our polynomials is that we have the greatest degree last and the smallest degree first so we need to pass the uh, coefficients to the function called polyval in the opposite order to what we have calculated so we have calculated a right so again let me show you there are a lot of things to be shown here so uh, so for example if you have a 1 2 3 if you do flip a it becomes 3 2 1 so what we need to do is we have our coefficients calculated for us but we need to flip them before passing in passing it to the polyval function so let's flip our a and then evaluate it at x q right and then that should work and let's see if it does there's a syntax error line number 19 let's go there there's nothing else. okay i forgot to close the brackets polyval yeah. and now as you can see the degree of polynomial that we have used is 3 so when you fit a 3 degree polynomial to this data set you get much more better approximation than what you did when you were using a first order polynomial or a straight line what if you want to you know uh, use a higher order polynomial so let's use 4 let's see what sort of fitting that gives us so you'll get even better fit using a fourth order polynomial so uh, I hope this makes sense. What if you have a single degree polynomial? What would you get then? What do you think you'll get? You'll get a straight line, right? So this is another way to implement linear regression. When you have a, you can write a code for polynomial regression and then uh, fit a first degree polynomial. So it works that way as well. And if you don't want to go through all this trouble, uh, so the thing that you can do is you have your x data you have your y data and let's plot it first right and then do hold on and then use matlab's inbuilt function to fit a polynomial for you so you type x comma y and you just give the degree of the polynomial that you want so for example i want a six degree polynomial fit so i just write this function which will calculate the coefficients of the polynomial and then i just plot them using x and polyval what do i evaluate which polynomial do i evaluate i evaluate the p polynomial given by the coefficients above at x values so you get this so you could have avoided all this trouble but the, there was no fun in that right you got to learn how you can use a very simple technique just generating a matrix to calculate the coefficients of a polynomial by the way this matrix is called a vander mode matrix you can look uh, its detail up in google so that's it for today and um, thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one